about Prisaeus. I'm also hoping that I'm pronouncing this right. I'm gonna look it up. Briseis. Oh sh Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So it is time for my first wrap up of 2022. I planned on doing like a quarterly wrap up. I am going to do a quarterly wrap up, but doing like right after the quarter of the year ended and it is already the end of May and I'm going to be doing my quarterly wrap up for January, February and March. A little bit later, but better later never, right? So I'm going to be going through all of the 23 books that I read in the first three months of the year, talking about some stats, quickly going through all of them and then talking a little bit more about some of my favorite ones because I don't really feel like doing big book reviews of 23 books if some of them I didn't really enjoy that much. So I just wanna like highlight a couple of my most favorite ones that I read in the first three months of the year. I hope you're going to enjoy this video and also just this format, instead of doing monthly wrap ups, just doing like quarterly wrap ups of the year. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the reading stats first. In total, I read 23 books and 10 of them were physical books, six were eBooks and seven were audio books. 15 of them were adult books and eight of them were young adult books. I haven't read any middle grade yet, but I plan on changing that for the rest of the year. And lastly, let's take a look at some genres. So as you can see, six of them were graphic novels, which was the majority of the books I read. I was very much into graphic novels lately. Then we have four contemporary, four science fiction, three historical fiction. I'm sorry, I'm looking at my screen because I can't remember all of this. <laughs> two classics and then one non-fiction, literary fiction, romance and short stories. I'm loving just seeing these graphs or like pie charts and making all of these statistics. If you have any like ideas of what other type of statistics you would like to see, let me know in the comments. I will tell you, let me look it up because I forgot to make like a cool graph of it. But in total, I read 3,138 pages and I listened to just over 51 hours worth of audiobook. Oh my God, I was just looking at my screen like, am I recording? Yes, I'm recording. Okay, so just over 51 hours of audiobook and my rating is just a 3.6 average. So not the best. I'm hoping that the rest of the year, the ratings will get higher. Okay. These were all of the statistics. Now let's quickly go through all of the books that I read. And then after that, I will highlight a few of my favorite ones. The first one is Letters to a Young Poet written by Rilke. I will talk about this more later on because this was amazing. Then we have a sci-fi called a Woman on the Edge of Time, which is a kind of feminist time travel sci-fi. I thought I was going to love this one, but unfortunately I didn't. Then we have The Girl with the Louding Voice, all about a little girl called Aduni who is married off to a very old man in Nigeria. And it's all about her finding her voice and really getting out of this awful situation. This was very tragic and emotional and so very good. I gave this one four out of five stars. Then we have Sisters in Arms. This was all about the first all black female battalion in the, like during the second world war. And you follow two women who are completely different from each other, who both join the army. It was very sad, but also so inspiring and powerful. Then we have Normal People by Sally Rooney. All about Connor and Marianne who are miscommunicating with each other a lot. It's about love, it's about friendship. It's just about, you know, finding this one person and it was very frustrating and personally i didn't really enjoy it that much i gave it three out of five stars i totally understand the appeal i really liked her writing style but i was just so very frustrated whilst reading this book i do want to watch the tv show though but i gave it three out of five stars then we have Vladimir. This is a very interesting story that takes place on like a college and we follow this woman who kind of creates this obsession over someone. I was actually quite into it. It was very intriguing, but also a bit disturbing. And I quite enjoyed it actually. I gave it three out of five stars and the cover just kind of threw me off. I thought this was going to be kind of a smutty romance, but it really wasn't and it was quite dark and twisted. So I really enjoyed it. Then I read the first four volumes in the Giant Days graphic novels, which I read on script. I actually have a link in my description where you can try out script. It's like an ebook and audiobook service. This is not sponsored, but if you try out or like try it out for a month using that link, I also get a free month, which is like a win-win. And there are so many audiobooks and graphic novels and like ebooks on there. So I read the first four of these Giant Days graphic novels, which was so much fun. You follow these friends that are at school and it is just all about love and friendship and sexuality 
It was very funny and I just flew through them. I also loved the illustration style. So if you're looking for fun graphic novels, I highly recommend these. Then I read The Woman Destroyed by Simone de Beauvoir. This is a collection of three short stories all about women dealing with different types of struggles, whether that be a husband who's cheating with a younger woman or a woman dealing with loneliness after both her husband and her son went away. This was a very interesting one and I enjoyed it. It wasn't amazing. Some of the stories I like a lot more than the other ones, but some were very kind of frustrating, but it was a very raw account of what these women went through with all of these, you know, struggles that they were dealing with in their lives. So I'm very happy that this was my first Simone de Beauvoir book because I'd never read anything um, by her before. Then I read some more graphic novels, namely Lumberjanes volume one and two, and this takes place at like a summer camp. It is a bit magical as well. I didn't expect that at first, but this was so incredibly enjoyable, very quick reads, very fun illustration style as well and just overall very heartwarming and funny. Then I listened to the final three books in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series written by Douglas Adams. The first two books that I read like a couple of years ago, I absolutely loved. But then the last three, I was just so unimpressed and it just felt like it was all over the place. Like if it was just the first one, it was amazing and it was so funny and they were definitely still funny. They're very funny science fiction stories that take place in space. So yeah, that's a bit of a pity. Do love this book though. <laughs> Look how freaking floppy. Oh my, oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god. Next we have Orbiting Jupiter, which was amazing. I'll be talking more about it later on. Oh my goodness, it was beautiful. It's about a boy named Jack who gets a new foster brother and that foster brother has been through a lot already. Then we have The Silence of the Girls written by Pat Barker. This is like a Greek mythology retelling that is all about Achilles, precise. I will also talk a little bit more about this because I'm getting so much more into Greek mythology and it is so good and I loved it. It was very, very great. Then we have The White Album by Joan Didion. I've always wanted to read some of her books before, so I decided to pick up this one because it's one of her most popular ones. So this is basically a non-fiction collection full of essays all about her life. This takes place like late 60s, early 70s. It's, a it's about her life in in Los Angeles and she went through some of the crazier things like being in the studio with Jim Morrison when he was just like making music but that was actually the most exciting thing about this entire short story collection because I don't live in Los Angeles and I think that if you don't live there you can really appreciate many of the things she was talking about because some of the things were so very much focused on the mundane things in Los Angeles and also things that I literally couldn't be bothered by like the water management I'm sorry but I just don't care so some of them I kind of skimmed through because I just really was not interested in what she was talking about unfortunately so I wish it was just more about her actual experiences instead of just random things in Los Angeles if that makes sense Next we have Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell. I finally read this one. I was so interested in reading this one and it did not disappoint. I will talk a bit more about it later on because it was very, very good. Then I listened to the audiobook of Paul. I was very intrigued by this cover and it's basically about a girl who gets into a relationship with a much older man. This one was incredibly disturbing and made me feel so just like, ugh, you know? So it wasn't my favorite, even though it was like good that the writer was able to make me feel this way but I didn't really enjoy it that much I think I gave it like three out of five stars it was just missing something but it was definitely an interesting one then we have my favorite book of the year which is also the first book I read in 2022 The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton I will talk about it more later on but oh my goodness this was just so so freaking good and then the 23rd book is Bridgerton's Happy Ever After. After the new season of Bridgerton was released, I was just like, I kind of want to read some more because it's just so very fun. And this is all like second epilogues to all of the books. So they're short stories where the writer's talking even more about what happened to all of the characters. And I've actually listened to all of the Bridgerton books last year after the first season was released because I was just like obsessed. And the books are very fun. They're very different from the TV show. And I can understand how they changed some things in the TV show to make it a bit more exciting. But now it's starting to just like drift apart like crazy and none of the story kind of makes sense anymore. <laughs> but still, it was fun listening to the second epilogues and to learn even more about how it ended with all the characters and it was fun, it wasn't amazing, which is very enjoyable. 
Okay, so these were all of the books that I read, but now I just want to talk about five of my favorite ones a bit more in detail. You know what, let's just begin with my favorite one, The Outsiders. This is a very, very short classic. I can't really remember how I found out about this book. I think I must have seen it somewhere on Instagram and I was just very intrigued by this cover. So I will read you from the back of it to kind of properly explain it. It says, the classic coming of age novel. The greasers and the rich kid socks are at war on the Tesla streets. Ponyboy, a 14 year old brawler, chain smoker and dreamer is a fiercely loyal greaser, but a single murderous catastrophe is to wrench him from his old life and overturn everything he thinks he knows. So this is all about our main character Ponyboy and you know, who is part of this gang. And these bo both of these gangs are always just fighting each other. But the reason for it is because they just don't know each other. This story is a lot about prejudice against people who are different from us. But if you get to know each other, you will find out how much you're actually alike. And there was this very, very beautiful quote in there about like how we all see the same sunset. And basically it's like there is no need to fight because we're all human beings and we're all on the same planet. Why not just live together in peace, you know? This was so incredibly beautiful. I cried, I loved, and the fact that it was so short and it made me feel just so many emotions, amazing. This is just, it's becoming one of my top favorite books ever, I think. I'm already recommending it to everyone. And I'm so glad that I started out the year with this book. Then my next favorite one is Orbiting Jupiter. Again, I will read you from the back to properly, you know, tell you what it's about. But it says, when Jack meets his new foster brother, he already knows three things about him. Joseph almost killed a teacher. He was incarcerated at a place called Stone Mountain and he has a daughter. Her name is Jupiter and he has never seen her. What Jack doesn't know at first is how desperate Joseph is to find his baby girl or how urgently he, Jack, will want to help. But the past can't be shaken off. Even as new bonds form, old wounds reopen. The search for Jupiter demands more from Jack than he can imagine. I did not expect to love it this much, but it was so beautiful and so emotional and it really is all about how important it is to have each other's back and you know take care of one another is there there's like a theme going on it but again with the first book the outside is just why not live together in peace help each other take care of one another this was amazing it was so beautiful it was also about a teen dad and that was very interesting i also don't know how i found out about this book to be honest again probably just saw it somewhere and i am so glad i picked it up because i was super pleasantly surprised Next, I found another new favorite, namely Letters to a Young Poet written by Ryoko. I've already heard so many amazing things about this book, so I thought, let's pick it up. Again, I'll just read you from the back to properly um, say what it's about. At the start of the 20th century, Reina Maria Rilke wrote a series of letters to a young officer cadet, advising him on writing, love, sex, suffering, and the nature of advice itself. These profound and lyrical letters have since become hugely influential for writers and artists of all kind. So this is all these letters that he wrote to this officer cadet, and I have never underlined this much in a book before. I didn't use colors, unfortunately, I just used a pencil, but it was so inspiring. He has such a beautiful lyrical way of writing. He is like, I agree with so many of his ideas about life and what it is to be alive and how to get the best out of life, you know? And it was amazing. I already want to reread this because I forgot m like a lot of the things that he said. And I just want to tattoo some of these thoughts and his ideas into my mind because it was so beautiful and inspiring. So I highly recommend this one. I totally get the hype because it was freaking amazing. Then we have Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. On a summer's day in 1596, a young girl in Stratford-upon-Avon takes to her bed with a sudden fever. Her twin brother Hamnet searches everywhere for help. Why is nobody at home? Their mother Agnes is over a mile away in the garden where she grows medicinal herbs and their father is working in London. Neither parent knows that Hamnet will not survive the week. This was absolutely amazing, beautiful, sad. The writing style was so beautiful. And I thought that Agnes was such an inspiring and precious character. I loved reading about her. And I thought it was great how this book really deals with different ways of dealing with grief. It was quite a slow book, but because it was very lyrical and it felt like very magical as well, I just kind of, you know, glided through the book, which was an amazing experience because it was also very character driven. And that is what I love. Like when books are slow, I don't mind it if they're very character driven. And that is definitely what this book was. So this was amazing. 
It says breathtakingly moving, outstanding, and I very much agree. And then the last one in my top five is The Silence of the Girls, which is a Greek myth retelling. When the Greek Queen Helen is kidnapped by Trojans, the Greeks sail in pursuit, besieging the city of Troy. Trapped in the Greek soldiers' camp is another captured queen, Briseis. Condemned to be best slave to Achilles, the man who butchered her family, she becomes a pawn in a menacing game between bored and frustrated warriors. And in the centuries after this most famous war, history will write her off. A footnote in a bloody story scripted by vengeful men. But Briseis has a very different tale to tell. So this is all about Briseis and her life of being a bed slave for Achilles and living on this camp with all of these soldiers. This was so good, so shocking, and very interesting to read more about, you know, the Trojan War and all these Greek stories that I'm very much getting into. I've already got a few other Greek mythology retellings that I'm dying to read, but this was amazing. I really just loved that it was about precise and not all these super, super famous characters in like the Greek myths. The only thing that I thought would make this book even better was reading a bit more about Precise before the actual um, siege of her city, because I wish to learn more about her life before that. And even though it was mainly about Precise, sometimes you didn't read from her point of view. And I do wish that it was even more about her point of view, actually, because she was such an interesting character. Um, so yeah, it was amazing. I just wish there was even more about Precise. I'm also hoping that I'm pronouncing this right. I'm gonna look it up. Briseis. Oh shit. Okay, these are all the books that I read in the first quarter of the year. I really hope you like this video and this format of me just, you know, talking a bit more in depth about a couple of my favorite books and just, you know, quickly going through the rest. So let me know in the comments if you like this type of format. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to comment something but you don't know what to comment, comment a... like a planet or like a, a starry something sky because I really love this book. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you're having a beautiful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.